Good morning, Gateway. Welcome to service this morning. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy Easter. (laughs) See, I was early up this morning. Let's stand, praise God. There's a place because of you. Because of you, because of you, because of your love, because of your blood. No more pain, no more sadness, no more suffering, no more tears, no more sin. Because of you, because of you, because of your love, because of your blood, oh, our sins are washed away, and we can live forever, now we have this hope, because of you. Because of you, because of you, because of your love, because of your blood, oh, our sins are washed away, and we can live forever, now we have this hope, because of you. city of our God because of you because of you because of you because of your love because of your blood oh our sins are washed away of you oh we'll see you face to face and we will dance together in the city of our God because of you morning gateway Happy New Year. I mean, Happy Easter. (laughs) Sorry, I just wanted to make you feel. uh, (laughs) But actually, it is New Year. Passover is the New Year for the Jewish people. (laughs) (laughs) He has risen. He has risen indeed. And so this morning, let's celebrate together that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rose from the grave. And this morning, he has paid for our sin, and he has cleansed our sin. And that is why the cross is white, because of what he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Please take a moment to greet those around and about you.
just before we um, have the call to worship, just um, a reminder of the Power Evangelism course that starts on the 11th of April, that is Thursday week, at between 7 and 9 on a Thursday evening here at Gateway. Uh, please join me if you would like to know a bit more about Power Evangelism. And then just a reminder that this evening there is no evening service, but we will be continuing from next week. Uh, but uh, please join us 6 p.m. on a Sunday evening for a time of intimacy with Christ. Being a busy weekend, we started Thursday evening with Tenebrae, where we are reminded of the shadows of darkness that were leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. We looked at the suffering that he underwent. Friday we came together on Good Friday to, to celebrate that it was a Good Friday because Jesus Christ took upon himself all our sin and he died on the cross and was buried for you and for me because of his great love for us. And um, Saturday, Jesus lay in the grave. He was dead. Everybody thought it was over. And then that Sunday morning, two women went to the grave and discovered it was empty. And so through their message that the tomb is empty, that he has risen, has echoed through the church for thousands and thousands of years. And so this morning, let us stand, and as we come to this call of worship, let us celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Let's stand and say together. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is our strength and our song. He has become our victory you are our God and we will praise you. You are our God and we will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Come, let us worship Almighty God. This is amazing grace. The things are new on Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth, authority thunder, and learn the breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me The son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, for all the nations, the truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of his brilliance, the king of glory, the king of Bible king. Take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life, that I would 
would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Amazing grace, this is unfailing life, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing life. This is a failing life. That you would take my place. That I would bear my cry. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. King of kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break And broken heart declare it pray For who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battle Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before him. Every knee will bow. the gate, make way before the King of Kings, the God who comes to save, is here to set the captives free, for who can stop the Lord Almighty, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power, and fighting our battle, and every knee will bow before our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Oh, our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battle. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his pride breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him.
cross for us, Lord. But, Lord, death is defeated. Lord, you have conquered the grave, Lord. It has no grip on us, Lord. And that's when death was a wreck. Alone in my sorrow and death in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began As was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to death When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your great soul Watches over me. You have made me new. Our life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Our life begins with you. Release from your chains on the ground. My shame was a ransom me faithfully born. He cancelled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free. Watch your soul. Savior display on a criminal cross. Darkness rejoices though heaven that lost. You Jesus the road with the freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your queen.
Salvation cornerstone, the solid ground, and to the fiercest drought and storm. What I do love, what that's of be when fears are still, when striving sin, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, new to come flesh, fullness of God in helpless place, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, to on that cross that Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin of him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world in darkness lay. Then burst in forth in glorious day, up from the crazy rose again. And as he stands in victory, and curse has lost his on me. For I am he, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From Christ's first cry to final breath, Jesus command my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. Called me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns. Oh, called me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. Yes, Father, we stand in you. Thank you, Lord. Take the time of worship. Pray now, Lord, that you live and reign as you bring the word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. morning while we were worshipping, I just sensed that there are some people that are like, Yo, did this really happen? Did God really do this for me? Um, when we stand in God's presence, we at times feel very unworthy and we kind of think, would this really happen? Would God really die for me? Would, would God really allow His Son to go through what he went through for me. And um, while, we were, while we were standing there and singing, I was reminded of the movie we watched on Friday evening. And uh, it's a, like a documentary. And there was this one pastor speaking. And um, he said that um, people tend to have this view that God's always angry at us. I remember growing up in Newcastle, and Newcastle is fairly similar to this area. We also get those high felt storms. 
And sometimes I'm standing there and I'm going, God, if you're angry with me, please don't take me out with lightning. Because you see what happens is we feel we're unworthy. But yet we sang a song that says we're free. We are free. You see what, what this pastor said. Um, he said that God isn't angry with us. You know, God is actually very happy with us. And it really struck me when we were singing there. It said that God brought all his vengeance, all his anger upon Jesus. And so God is happy with us. And so this morning, I know some of this sounds like, whoa, <laughs> mind-blowing. But you know what we need to do? We accept it with our heart. See, when we try and understand it with our mind, it's, there's lots of questions. How do you receive love? You first think it through before you let it go to your heart. Generally, we start loving with our heart, don't we? Who uses their brain before they love somebody? <laughs> well, when we love Jesus, when we love our wife or our husband, when we love our children, when I first saw David and Angela come out their mother's womb, it wasn't, ooh, do I think I'm going to love these two? <laughs> no. As soon as they were born, I knew I loved them. Even before they were in their mother's womb, I loved them. And that's what God does with us. It says, before you were even conceived, before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, God loved us. We were fear fearlessly and wonderfully made. Amen. And so this morning, before I come to the word, let us just come in prayer. Almighty God, as we come into your presence this morning, we just thank you, Lord, for your amazing, unconditional love for us. Yes, Lord, it is amazing grace to, to stand here and just try to understand your love for us. Lord, when I try and work it out in my mind, it just doesn't make sense. But yet, Lord, when I allow it to fill my heart, it makes great sense. Lord, maybe this morning we come before you feeling guilty of sin. Maybe we have sinned and, and let you down. And so, Lord, this morning in Jesus' name, we pray, forgive us. Lord Jesus, may your blood cleanse us. And Lord, may we stand before you this morning in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, maybe there are some this morning who don't know love, have never experienced love. But Lord, I pray that through the, den through the gentle touch and power of your Holy Spirit, that people's hearts may know love. And Lord, I pray now that as we come to the preaching of your word, Lord, I pray for wisdom and grace as we try to understand your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I am going to read from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. And reading from verses 1 to 10. Matthew chapter 28 and reading from verses 1 to 10. Please follow me on the screen or using your hardcover Bibles. Let us hear the word of God. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook. They weren't springboks. 
and began to be like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb. They left their handbags and all their sewing. Afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May God bless to us the reading of his word. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's interesting this morning, I read a different version. I, I, I read from Luke chapter 24 and looked at the first 13 verses. And in Luke chapter 2, the, the description of what happened is so different to this description. And the reason is that he's Dr. Luke. He's a second generation Christian. He has heard stories from, from, from those that were there. And uh, then he wrote out that story. And, 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 and that's why it's a little bit different. But in Matthew, Matthew was there. And, and, and he spoke to these women. Because in, in, in Luke, it says that Mary Martha was there. Mary uh, the mother of James, and it says that, that there were about three or four other women there, but Jared talks about just these two women who go to the tomb. And what was the amazing thing when they got to the tomb? It was empty. Why? Because he has risen. He has risen indeed. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, the Christian faith is a foolish fantasy. However, if the resurrection of Christ did occur, it confirms his life, message, and atoning work. It is the basis of our hope of life beyond the grave. Kurt de Haan states, Christ is alive and the evidence is overwhelming. Yeah, are some of the reasons we can be sure. Firstly, Jesus predicted his resurrection. He said in Matthew 16 verse 21, Mark chapter 9 verses 9 to 10, and John chapter 2 verses 18 to 22, that he will rise again. He says um, that, that, that he will be, that he will be um, crucified, that he will be persecuted by his enemies, that he would die, but on the third day he would rise again. Secondly, the Old Testament prophesied it in Psalm 16 verse 10. The tomb, thirdly, was empty and the grave clothes vacant. I like that word vacant. If those who opposed Christ wished to silence his disciples, all they had to do was produce a body. But they could not. Many people saw the resurrected Christ. They looked on his face, touched him, heard his voice, and saw him eat. It says that there were possibly 500 witnesses to the resurrected Christ. Now, some people will say, no, but it was an hallucination. Well, I, I would understand if there was one person that mentioned Jesus was alive. Maybe two. May, 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 maybe five, I would say, might have been hallucinating. But 500? The 
The fifth point is the lives of the disciples were revolutionized. Though they fled and even denied Christ at the time of his arrest, they later feared no one in their proclamation of the, ribbon, of the risen Christ. How many times did Peter deny Christ? Afterwards, he never denied him. The sixth point is that the resurrection was the central message of the early church. The church grew with an unwavering conviction that Christ had risen and was the Lord and is the Lord of his church. Men and women today testify that the power of the risen Christ has transformed their lives. We know that Jesus is alive, not only because of his historical and biblical evidence, but also because he has miraculously touched our lives. I don't know about you, but I, I experience him every day. I get this like a warm and fuzzy feeling when I think about Jesus. And I know it's Jesus. I know that he walks with me and he talks with me. I don't think that we realize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has transformed our lives on so many levels. We are not meant, we are not meant to search for him in the empty tomb. So many people today still go and look for Jesus at the empty tomb. This morning I shared, and, and it really was a powerful verse in Luke 24, verse 3. It said there, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Many times people still leave Jesus at the cross. They think that he's dead and he can't help them anymore. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? In life, we can waste so much time looking for what has been and harping on the past. We spend way too much time condemning ourselves for past sins and living in guilt. We spend so much time listening to those voices that say that we are not good enough. We may... We may so much time at the empty tomb. We waste so much time being angry and unforgiving towards each other. And we hold this bitterness. As Corrie Tim Wormway said that unforgiveness is like carrying, or rather fear, rather she says worrying about tomorrow is like carrying today's problems today. But to me the same applies to, to unforgiveness. It's like carrying the hurt and anger of what the other person has done to us, and, and it just takes away our life today. You know, someone once said, it's, bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. My friends, life is so short, extremely short. I've done funerals of an eight-day-old baby. David was three and a half weeks old. He was a prem baby. On that same day that I brought my son home out of being in hospital for three and a half weeks, I buried a three-month-old baby. I buried people who are 10 years old. A little boy who got cancer. I've done burials of people who are 30, 40 some who are close to 100 years old, but life is so short. Live your life. Don't regret your life. Life is so short. This life on earth is so short. So stop wasting your time searching at the tomb. We waste so much time at the empty tomb, friends. The old has gone and the new has come. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, the apostle Paul writes, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. 
The old has gone. The new is here. The old has gone. The new is here. He has risen. He has risen indeed. We are meant to live transformed lives. We are meant to go quickly and tell others about the transforming love of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't think that we understand or, or rather we have underestimated the significance of two women at the tomb of Jesus on the first Easter Sunday. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Yes, it tells us that they went and that, that w w when Jesus' body was prepared to be put into the grave on the Friday, it was a rush job and, and they needed to finish the job. But as I explained this morning, I truly believe that these women, Jesus had, had such an impact on their life that they just wanted to see him one more time. Even if they had to see that, that, that bruised face and that bloated face and, 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 and that broken body, they just wanted to see him one last time. Just wanted to, to remember what had been. Mary Magdalene's life was transformed in an awesome and meaningful way by Jesus. She was absolutely distraught by his death. From the moment she repented from her life of sin, she followed Jesus. I can imagine when, when she was in the presence of Christ, she felt absolute freedom. She was not limited by her past sins, her gender, or her past life. She knew that in Christ she, she, she was a new creation. But when she, saw die, when she saw Jesus dying on the cross, it must have felt as if her whole life was falling apart before her eyes. Have you ever been there? Where you think your life and everything is just going hunky-dory? And then, bang! It falls apart. You try everything. And it just doesn't work. Then at the tomb, something powerful occurred before their eyes. It reads, there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was as lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The gods were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. This earth-shattering experience brought, brought joy to their lives and which has echoed throughout the world, throughout the chambers of the church for countless generations. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is no longer in the grave. We no longer have to search for him in the tomb. He has risen and he is now found in the hearts of every believer. On Sunday, I shared with you that the curtain was cut in two. Why? Because that curtain between the Holy of Holies and, 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 and the um, holy place was there so that there would be division between God and man because God hated sin. But then, when Jesus said, it is finished, what happened? And there was another earthquake, and the curtain tore in two. 
I mean, I would have loved to have been there because it says the saints came out of their graves and went to greet everybody. <laughs> but Jesus has risen. And because that curtain is now torn, there's no more division between us and God. And so God comes into our heart. In, in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, it says that we are the tabernacle or we are the temple of God and that his Holy Spirit resides in us. Why? Because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. The resurrection is the big bang of spirituality. Some people fervently believe that Jesus physically rose from the dead. They take the story at face value. Some people think the whole story is a foolish legend that has caused more problems than it is worth. Whatever people believe about it, those beliefs drive their behaviors. We all live in the shadow of the story. There was no hesitation or doubt in the reaction of the woman. They didn't sit around and argue with one another over a cup of tea about what they ought to do. The angel said, go tell. And they did. They ran with fear, but with great joy. And they ran. And as they ran, Jesus showed up to meet them. Jesus showed up and caught them in the act of being obedient. They carried the message, and in that, they met Jesus. Sometimes in, with God, some things don't make sense. <laughs> but I've discovered that when you, when you let go and let God, and when you do what God tells you to do, within that motion, you meet Jesus. There is a great temptation in all of us to turn the Christian faith into a head game, to reduce the Christian faith to a world limited to the thoughts between our ears, doctrines and articles of faith and theological principles. Please don't get me wrong. I believe all of, I believe all of this matters all of those words have risen from a human experience. They allow the continuing conversation that is part of the Christian experience and witness to the world. But Jesus did not die and rise from the dead so that people could someday write theologies and prohibitive doctrines. He did it to seal the transformation that Mary Magdalene saw in her own life and that we should see in our own lives. He did it so that people would be willing to carry the message to others, to turn and run after than turning away and retreating. He did it so that his disciples would know that he would always be with them, even if it took going back home to Galilee to realize it. We need to be reminded that Jesus conquered death. He is no longer, he is no longer in the tomb. He is no longer in the tomb. Jesus isn't just risen. He is living and he is Lord. Finally, I close with this beautiful poem by John of Damascus. The day of resurrection. Earth, tell it out abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from this world to the sky, our Christ has brought us over with songs of victory. Now let the heavens be joyful 
Let earth her song begin. Let the round world keep triumph and all that is therein. Let all things seen and unseen their notes in gladness blend. For Christ the Lord has risen, our joy that has no end. And so my friends, don't look to the tomb. Look to Jesus. Jesus or God said in Deuteronomy, I give you two choices today. Choose life or choose death. I would encourage you this morning, choose life. Choose this life of victory that Jesus has given you. And may you this morning live in the joy that his resurrection brings to us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we just praise and thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is no longer in the tomb, that he has risen. And Lord, I pray this morning that in each of our lives, that if there is defeat, bring victory. Lord, where there is hopelessness, bring hope. Where there is fear, bring love. And Father, this morning, transform our lives. May we no longer follow this pattern of the world, which is negative, which is pessimistic. But Lord, fill us today with the Holy Spirit and fill us with an optimism. Fill us with a hope that Jesus is alive and that he is King of kings and Lord of lords of our hearts. And Father, be with us this morning. Guide and lead us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we reflect on the word that we've just heard, let us take up the offering. Can I ask you to stand as the offering is brought forward? Dear Lord God, as we come before you with the joy and thankfulness of what you've done for us, and as we come and return some of the gifts that you give us on a daily basis and we return it to you. We are forever grateful for what you have done for us. You, the living God, thank you that we are privileged to know you, that you know us and that you have called us to you. Lord God, we just pray for those that are 
not here the day, today that are suffering, that are struggling through illnesses. We just pray your hand of blessing on them, that you'll heal them and just give them comfort in their hour of need. And Lord God, as we bring these gifts before you, we pray that you'll multiply them for the work of your kingdom in this place. And thank you once again, Lord God, for what you've done for us. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated. We are shortly going to come before God. We're going to come to the Lord's table. And um, I just want to explain to you why we've kind of set it up the way that we have um, this morning is that what will happen is when we get to the point of the service where the elders will ask you to come up row by row is what, I, uh, what will happen is that in front you will get the, the bread and then you'll get the wine or the grape juice. Um, and then what you can do is a little glass. Instead of putting it back into the tray, just put it into the basket. Much easier. And then when you've done that, now I know that some of you weren't here on Friday, but on Friday morning, everyone came and put a red flower on the cross, which represented a fear, their sin, um, a worry, and they... And they um, put it onto the cross, but as you can see, the flowers have now turned white, meaning that we have been set free, that we have been forgiven, and that Jesus is taking charge of all our problems. So what I'd encourage you to do is that after you have put down your glass, that you can just move through here or move through there and, and just take a white flower. It's a gift to you from, from the church to remember your Easter experience. Um, but I would ask you, if, if you're not going to be using the flower and you don't want to remember your Easter experience, <laughs> outside are, are, are white bowls. You can just put it in there. But we would like you to keep the white flower and that you can remember what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Remember what, what happened with the, with the Azazel, with the goat. They used to tie a red ribbon around it, the legend goes. And they used to take it outside of the city. And then the, the, the bow became white as a symbol to them that God had forgiven them. Now, I'm not trying to start another legend and start another fact. But I want you to know this morning that you are forgiven. And if you came be before God with, with an issue or a worry, that it is in the hands of God. And God will will sort it out. Amen. So we now come to the Lord's table and let us come before his, his table knowing that he is in charge, that he has always been in charge and that he will always lead and guide us. And the wonderful thing about the Lord's table is that everyone is welcome. I always used to say when I was younger, even if you were a, you know, a bells and smells person, and you wanted the incense, you're welcome. Or if you are a charismatic who likes to dance on the ceiling, you're just as welcome. Because <laughs> Jesus loves us all. And so we're all welcome at this table. Scripture reminds us that on the eve of the Lord's crucifixion, that he took bread and that when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And then he lifted them both up and said, do this until I come. Amen. Let us pray.
mighty heavenly Father. Life is one big mystery. Just like the mystery of death. But yet, Lord, in the mystery of life, there are many questions that we may have. But yet, Lord, there is one foundational thing which is real, and that is the reality that God loves us. And Father, we just praise and thank you that you are a God who wants to give. Lord, right in the beginning, you created the universe. You gave Adam and Eve an, an option to enjoy everything that you had created. Yes, there was that prohibition about the two trees in the center of the garden. And Lord, that is sometimes what life is about. We focus Instead of focusing on the 99%, we focus on the 1%. And when Adam and Eve allowed themselves to be deceived by that 1%, they brought death upon humanity. But yet, Lord, you never gave up. And we go through the Bible and we see that you created a nation called Israel through a man of faith called Abraham. And you said that within his seed, there would come a savior, not just of the Jewish nation, but of the world. And Lord, we see in history how this all develops. We see how, how the Jewish nation is created. We see how you lead them from captivity and, and into the promised land and, and how you, Lord, teach us about Jesus through the Passover and, and through Yom Kippur and all these festivals Lord, that remind us of Jesus, but also Pentecost that reminds us of the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. But yet, Lord, the, the journey goes on, and, and 2,000 and, and years ago, you, you brought to the world your greatest gift, your Son, Jesus Christ. The world was at a point, Lord, where, where, where people felt there was no hope, for when they died, they died. Their future was not secure. Their eternal life was not secure. But yet, Lord, your word says, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And so, Lord, this morning we come before you at this table and we are reminded that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was crucified. He died, and the third day he rose again from the dead. And we are just so grateful, Lord, for what he has done for us. And Lord, we are thankful that Jesus Christ took all our burdens, took all our sin, and that he, Lord, has forgiven, that he has cleansed, and that he has healed. And Lord, may we experience that forgiveness, and that healing this morning. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, on the eve of his crucifixion, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat, this bread and drink from this cup. We are reminded of his death and of his coming again in glory. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. body of Christ given for me. The blood of Christ shed for me. I call upon the elders to please come forward. Body of Christ given for me.
Father's house. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Lord Jesus, we are thankful that we are yours. Lord, we don't have to doubt. For we know we are a child of God. We thank you that you have chosen us, that you have spoken your word over our lives. And Lord, we just thank you for this Easter experience that teaches us that we are a child of God, that we are highly loved. And we just thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Lord, be with us now as we go into this this week. May it be a week, Lord, where we know that you are with us and that you'll never leave nor forsake us. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, all and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our great, our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, the light and the joy. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great 
desire God, sing with me a great desire God, and all will see a great, a great desire God. Sing. 